here and here. Right. Hello, awesome people. Welcome back to the Good To Go pod. With me today, I have Anna Maria. Hi, Anna Maria. How Hello. are you? I am good. Uh, so the first question off the bat, who are you and what do you do? Uh, I am a landscape architect uh, and I uh, lived in Stockholm for the past 15 years. Uh, I landed like my uh, dream job here. I made my poor boyfriend at the time move here from, from uh, Malmö. Mm. Uh, and I worked at a, a firm that was at that time, we were just seven people. Uh, we're called Ecology Group, uh, and now we're 60. Wow. So it's been uh, quite the journey. Uh, wow. And life so project. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, which is, of course, also scary right now mm-hmm. in these days. <laughs> but uh, I have like so many awesome colleagues. That's really what yeah, makes, uh, makes it uh, all the hard work worthwhile here. Um, nice. Yes, so I'm sitting in our, my favorite uh, uh, conference room. Yeah, right now. Yeah. It, looks, it looks really nice. Actually. Yeah. With the, with the windows behind you there and looks yeah, like, it looks like a good open space. Yes, it's, uh, it's so nice to be here also after being uh, at home. <laughs> yes, <laughs> home, of course, on shutdown. So, <laughs> so for anybody listening in the, in the future future, not in the immediate future, but way in the future, if you're, going, <laughs> if you're actually listening to this podcast, if we're still all here, um, we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic with COVID-19 or coronavirus. Um, and we're not actually going to talk about landscape architecture with you today. What we are going to talk about is uh, gardening. Yeah. Right? That's what we're yes. going to talk about. Yes. So because, because I know you and because, um, you know, I have a podcast and I want people to come on and talk, my pod- talk to, with me on my podcast, I thought that maybe we could have a conversation about gardening. Uh, here at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere, we're coming into spring. Easter is in a couple of weeks for us at the moment. Uh, and it's time to start thinking about getting in and doing your garden for summer, that kind of stuff. Also, in the back of my head is I don't know how to grow food. And if this is the apocalypse, I'm fucked. Um, oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to swear. <gasps> Hopefully they'll miss that. Yeah. I might be able to go and beep that out. Um, you know, I sort of, <laughs> having, having a garden for me is, is this thing that I try and do every single year and every single year, I just don't find the time or the energy to actually put into growing plants. It's like, I am the death of all plants. My wife, however, <laughs> loves growing, like she, our, our apartment is, it's like walking through a jungle at times. Uh, she's, you know, really good with plants. I suck at it. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you questions about that. How can I be better at keeping plants alive? Um, but I guess, so my first question here is, and for those of us who are isolating right now, right, planning, moving forward to summer and, you know, being able to have our own uh, a bountiful harvest <laughs> for midsummer or, or whatever the <laughs> celebrations are you're going to have. What should we be doing right now in this moment in our isolation in our apartments to be moving towards having a garden over summer, that kind of stuff? I'm letting myself sit at this. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so I, I just... Because um, okay, so, so my uh, mind immediately goes towards tomatoes, right? And then making, getting the, the egg cartons out and filling them up with dirt and then putting seeds yeah. in and then letting it, how do I do that? Like what's, what's the most fun kid friendly way of germinating seeds and what seeds should I be germinating in order to have something on the table for a summer celebration? It doesn't have to be, I realize midsummer is actually quite soon. It's yeah. So, I, so it's the end of summer or, or yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Help me out so here. How do I put this and not to be, to get anyone disappointed. I think the first, the first step of gardening is to like lower your standard. Okay. 
Okay, so all right, <laughs> let's start there. What should my and, standards uh, be? And do like the super easy things. I mean, mm. you are going to fail, obviously. Mm. Uh, I've had um, uh, my own, or my, uh, an allotment garden together with one of my besties, Lotta, for like uh, eight years, and it's been a struggle. <laughs> so hey. Through so many failures, and uh, yeah. I'm a country girl. I grew up on the countryside. Yeah on a farm and I didn't like seeing my my dad growing vegetables like all my life uh, and I was like how hard can it be <laughs> and it turns out it's really 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 hard really yes. yeah nobody's uh, ever said that to me I've never nobody has ever said that to me I'm really because so so, and here's it here it is like I'm, I'm hearing it from somebody who who, uh, you're not a gardener by profession, but by profession you are a landscape architect. So you've you've done the education. You know, yeah. When it comes to also, setting things in place, how to make yeah, things work, like theoretical knowledge is also like counts yeah. for very little when you're actually in yeah. it. I also, Practical. Okay. So I've been thinking about this uh, a lot lately because I knew we were going to have this conversation, and mm. uh, and it's. Uh, Really, have to. I think it all comes down to have to. You, fi- you have to find your own style yeah. of gardening, and like, okay. to think of who are you as a person? Ooh, wow, you, wow, wow! You, <laughs> there are Wait. so many way, different ways to do it. <laughs> <laughs> My world just totally opened up. It's like, wow, you mean you get to be me and garden at the same yes. time? Yes, you just have to find your plant friends and uh, go with. Okay. Uh, maybe also, I'm a big fan of like going like connecting with nature and making mm-hmm. your garden be a part of nature and not mm-hmm. like struggling so much against I mean gardening uh, can feel like a struggle mm. there are so many things that can go wrong with mm. the weather with the pests bugs mm. uh, and I mean every year I'm like so grateful that I don't have to grow my own food <laughs> I was like, I'm so sufficient on garlic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So garlic is your plant friend. <laughs> yes. That's like it. garlic and potatoes. That's kind of like a pasta and okay. what we are down to at our allotment garden. We both have small kids. Uh, so what, what is good for small kids when, when, so... Best- you know, at teaching teaching your kids how to yeah, garden, and that's what sort also of like, things are good for to help them learn these skills? Like what? Yeah, and they like also what? have to like have in mind that all kids are different. Yeah, uh, I live, I have a family <laughs> with three, two, uh, two boys and a husband. Who, and a husband, so three uh, boys. Yes, and they <laughs> three boys <laughs> who are not interested at all in gardening. Oh. And the, well, some, like when the strawberries arrive, they're a little bit interested. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, like, the currants are like the red currants are like too sour. And <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, also, there you can like have to high expectations for not things like, like every child loves the garden. But my friend lost the her son. She, he really, he, um, he loves the red currants. So, okay. berry bushes are yeah. great. They're not yeah. too much work. Yep. And they just uh, keep producing. Year after so year. if I wanted to grow berry bushes in my country house, how yeah. I, how, what's the best way to do that? Is it to go and buy, buy a, an already, uh, you know, half grown or fully grown berry bush yeah, from the local or, Yeah. Or just like shop? Take, uh, at, talk to a friend who has an allotment garden and you can mm-hmm. have like a small, like, uh, it's really easy to oh. you just put down a branch from a red currant and it start, starts and it, getting uh, oh. roots. Uh, and there are like all these different kinds of currants uh, on the market, and some yeah. of them are bred to withstand certain diseases, but they okay. don't taste good. Yeah. So it might be worth having. I mean, you know, it's like no use of, of growing berries if they're not tasty. Yeah. So no, uh, you want tasty berries. That's yeah, and yeah. maybe an older, um, or like older so, cult- cultivar. So if I if I go and take a little cutting from yeah. uh, more and more berry bush and stick mm-hmm. it in the ground at my country house, will that grow? Yes, if you give it some love <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> so when you put a plant down in the soil, you, like water is crucial. 
mm. and our, mm. uh, <laughs> which and we have really like dry springs yes sweden yes. Uh, it's just like it's a historic problem in sweden for farmers uh, and especially here on the East Coast, it rains more on the West Coast, but on the East Coast, yep. planting stuff in the spring can be a little bit of a challenge. So are, are we better off germinating things inside and then planting? Um, yeah, you know? maybe in fall, because it's usually more early fall when there's more rain. Okay, so we keep things in pots for spring and summer, and then yeah. at the end of summer, beginning of autumn, we plant it in the ground. Yeah, if you don't have, like, okay. you can't be there all the time to water your plants. I mean, when there are these, uh, if you're going to want to plant trees, uh, there are these bags now you can buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah I've seen them. Streetscapes, uh, the city of Stockholm used them. Um, it's really expensive to plant trees, so you need, and it's a super common mistake, even in, like, professional um, yeah, cases that you forget to water your trees mm -hmm. <laughs> and they mm -hmm. die and they die uh, yeah so we, like we had this really hot summer a couple of years ago yeah really hot really dry summer yeah, and we a lost lot of, a lot of plants that summer yeah yeah that was tough yeah we also like uh, had like projects with the uh, at our office that you know mm. that summer mm. um so and mm. Another like key of planting or like planting your garden and becoming friends with the, the garden is like to get to know your soil. Okay, well. right. This uh, is where this is. This is. Tell me about soil. Tell me about this. <laughs> talk dirty to me. <laughs> uh, so it turns turns it turns out Sorry. we have different kinds of soil. Okay. In Sweden, I grew up in uh, Småland mm. in the south of Sweden, where there is like. Um, in some places the soil is like super sandy mm. and then I moved to Stockholm and we have clay soil here which is okay. a completely different thing <laughs> I've been uh, struggling with this uh, soil at our allotment also yeah. uh, and uh, so clay soil can be super tough to work with yep. and to get things to germinate in and you need to just f keep feeding it with the uh, organic materials. So if you have a compost going at your, like, at your summer house, that would mm. be a great way to activate your soil. Okay. Um, and then what if you've got the, the sandy soil? What are the issues there? Oh, well, it's, kind of, it's kind of the same with the organic materials, but yeah. you have, um, it's easier to dig uh, in the sand soil, of course. Um, after like in the dry springs here you can like barely get a shovel down in the yeah. in the at uh, our yeah Pung Pinan, which is the fabulous name of our allotment garden <laughs> i don't know if you even want to go translate that <laughs> no you, you can you can translate that or as my dad uh, wrote mm. <laughs> message the other day but uh, it actually means like uh, painful testicles yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> who thought that would be a good name for a gardening allotment yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it uh, yeah it's just uh, anyway uh, like all the work we put into to the soil at this place it's uh, um so like yeah you need to really like get down with your soil and like yeah. get to know it and see what it and understand needs. It can be, like, what it's, okay and, and, like so yes, then make it nice and fluffy do you do raised garden beds or do you dig down uh i've gone more and more towards raised garden beds yeah. uh, but uh we've also it's really popular here in Sweden to use like old uh, palkragar. Yes, which is uh, English and uh, uh, it's like it's a like, pallet, um, a pallet frame. Yeah, uh, and it's you know what I've only ever seen them here. I've I've never seen them in Australia. Um, no. <laughs> so I 
I don't even know what, you, but yeah, the, the <laughs> translation is a pallet frame. And it's just this frame that sits on top of a pallet, but it's perfect for making a raised garden bed because they just sit on top of each other and you can actually just hammer them into the ground. Yeah, um, that's like a super easy way to start. Yeah, start really, off. And, it's, and it's a really good, like you, two of them are a really good height to be kneeling next to when you're doing yeah. your gardening. Uh, and they're just a really, I find they're just a, they're actually just a really good size to work yeah, with you're not yeah. having to lean over to, like ergonomically you're not having to lean over too far and Definitely. that kind of stuff and so it's fun fun for kids too to be like in there to like they can have their own pallet yeah idea. yeah <laughs> and then you get to have your own <laughs> so it's a that's really really good way of starting starting off because then you don't like yeah, plan too big areas yeah and then as you develop you might think they're like too small and but you can i mean with them like the lifetime of a palakage might be as long as you need for that yep. other stage to come when you yep. want to like upscale your, for, if you ever do get to that. <laughs> for when you feel but, more developed in your gardening, you, you <laughs> yes. stop killing everything inside. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, so there are like, there's this whole permaculture thing, which mm -hmm. I haven't really gone into. Well, uh, let's go into permaculture. Go into permaculture. Ooh, uh, come on, I'm, what's permaculture? <clears throat> That's like a more advanced, uh, like you don't want to, uh, you want to keep like all the organisms and worms and stuff in the, in the ground. So that's the, basically, you're not like using shoveling down into the soil at all. It's just like, oh, so, so you're right. making piles on top of the soil yeah. so, and, and you're not even doing like the, the raised garden bed. You're just kind of making a pile on top. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm really, I mean, they're like, I haven't gotten in. To that myself at the, the garden you're not like there yet too. with your own no i'm not maturity <laughs> totally not <laughs> and it's, it's some of these things have uh, yeah i'm just letting it take its uh, time there are like so many like uh, schools or how would you say like different schools uh, of thought yeah yeah, yeah. that you can uh, take and sometimes you can also feel a bit like forced into <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So pressured, pressured to, <gasps> yes. oh my God, I can't believe you're using that in your garden. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's a little bit the vibe. I love uh, Feng Shui Nan. It's a really like hippie vibe. <laughs> there. I mean, some of my gardens, they like ball you out because you haven't like cut your raspberries in the right way. Oh my God. They're very liberal and nice. And it's, uh, everyone is working towards increasing biological yeah. diversity. But then yeah. it's like, so it's like taboo at the, to like to buy soil okay like ready-made bags of soil it's like yeah it's hardcore you're yeah. gonna make your own soil oh okay <laughs> and you make your own soil through composting yes. and trading with other gardeners yeah and stuff and and also there are like a lot of uh, like super engaged people who contact stables to, to get like big oh, piles of manure. Get manure. Yeah, and we've had like manure Yay. from goats and from sheep and for like yeah. from like all different kinds of animals. <laughs> and also like wood cuttings. Yeah. Uh, someone found I mean people are super creative and it's it's actually quite an amazing feeling to be able to get all these resources. And yeah. Johanna, our mutual friend, also yes. goes to your studio. They get compost from uh, like a high-end restaurant in, in oh, Stockholm. Okay. For their allotment. So it's uh, so finally like closing this uh, let's not. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't them. isn't that like that's that's such a it's such a like I've never even thought about that. It's a thought that I've never. That's really cool. I'm enjoying this thought right now. It's such a, a much more sustainable way for everybody to be able to work together. Yeah. Be able to you know, to learn to grow food uh, without increasing waste issues. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the whole, I mean, because in the whole soil, do you call it soil? Like, what do you call yeah. it? The earth. Dirt. Soil. Yeah, earth. soil. Yeah. Soil. <laughs> and bags that you use is, uh, is almost like fossil fuel from like peat, peat moss. Peat moss, yeah. Yeah. So that's not really, and it's not okay. that great either. I mean, it's good for like, I mean, you can like buy some soil for like, and you have to cultivate 
Like, yeah, stop making you know, me feel guilty things, for buying yeah. soil, right? Stop making me feel bad. <laughs> soil shaming you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that's even like been out on the Facebook page at our last minute. Oh my like, God. Okay to buy oh some God. soil. We're like covering the little seeds. <laughs> yeah. come, come on. I'm a, struggle, <laughs> I'm a struggling trainer with children that I have to entertain <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. over the Easter break. And one of, one of our activities is getting these egg cartons that we've been collecting for the past 12 months yeah. and planting tomatoes. Yeah. You know, so we awesome. go and buy the soil and we. Yes. And great. Like, they're also like tomatoes are a lot of work. Are they? Yes. <laughs> uh, some people are just have like, I never grow tomato because it's like, oh God, this, this is a horrible struggle. And then like produce like one, like one tomato. tomato. <laughs> like that never really gets ripe at the end of this short shitty Swedish summer but I mean lately I mean climate change is gonna yes. make the tomatoes taste awesome in yes. yes I know <laughs> we're all gonna be eating tomatoes from that one <laughs> but, mm. but but I mean it's also like it seems like different people have also talents for different mm. plants uh yep. I don't I can't see tomatoes but um peppers are fun they're easy oh Wow, uh, really? Pepper, I mean, really? you don't really uh, have to, I mean, kids might not enjoy the chili peppers, but just regular pepper, peppers, like snack yeah. peppers. So, for Australians, that is capsicum. Ah, um, yes. Yes. I don't know what it's called in other parts of the world, but in where I come from, yeah. we call uh, it capsicum. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. It's confusing me when I was in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they're surprisingly easy to grow and also like okay. if you can put them against like a warm wall or something okay and squash is really easy to grow yeah so and when you say squash again i need to translate this for myself uh, like as well zucchini. so like zucchinis yeah. and so when where i come from we used to have these little round yellow ones which we would call a squash what do we call them some kind of squash they were super tasty they, they were, were like about this big and they were yellow yeah. and they like they said it looked like a little ufo they're about this round uh people listening yeah. to this can't see that that's about <laughs> that's me holding my hand up in a big c <laughs> anyway it, 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 so, something that seemed it was squashy related. It, was, it, was, <laughs> it was related to the squash family um ah, they must have been tasty kind of like oh, like there's a winter squash yeah yeah oh there's so many different kinds yeah uh, uh, like pumpkins are fun too but they yep. require a lot of like super good soil and okay manure and stuff okay and compost and you can eat the flowers too yes yeah. awesome put them in like a tortilla bread oh. and make like quesadillas oh <gasps> oh yeah nice yeah. so really... so for kids right for kids fun yes. with kids so uh -huh. particularly again given current times because we may or may not all be stuck inside for several weeks with them <laughs> yes <laughs> god help me uh, if that happens uh, when when that when and if that happens to us yes. in stockholm yeah. um zucchinis mm -hmm. you don't you start to start too early though i mean the, the okay so when do we start like, with the zucchinis right when that, when's a good time to start with because Tom I'm going to do tomorrow. You can't stop me from doing tomorrow. No, despite do it, the fact do that it, I fail every it, single do time. It, do it. But I think it's fun for the kids if they ever yes. actually germinate. So tomatoes, zucchinis, yeah, that's, potatoes. That's, yes, that's also great. Uh, so tomatoes and um, and like peppers and chill peppers. You can start yep. now. Now? Uh, yes. Uh, but um, I would wait with like zucchinis to like end of April maybe. Okay. Because they go really quickly. And if they're... Oh, okay. If you don't have like these uh, garden lights inside your home, they, uh, the, I mean, it's getting lighter and lighter. So yeah. more light makes the plants more like healthy and sturdy. So it's yeah. easy to plant them out. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, you want to start everything at the same time, but, yeah. uh, but it's smart to wait for some of the stuff. And then yeah, you can okay. also like take them out on the balcony and get some of them used to being outside. So uh, wait, so plants have to get used to being outside? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> K 
can't just like. But I've I've seen people. Can I do. just take them from the bathroom <laughs> to the dirt? <laughs> to the to, oh, to my lawn. Brad, I've seen that being done, and sometimes okay, great. <laughs> is, is this why my garden fails every year? Because I don't give my my seedlings time to a clock to to get used to being out. Like yeah, no, they think it like, like they're indoor plants. <laughs> You little seedling, you've got to learn to be outdoors. You're going to be out on the balcony for three hours yep. a day. Wow. Otherwise, they will be get like a, a severe sunburn. <laughs> or, God, I'm a terrible just, plant uh, <laughs> uh, So it's a lot of like carrying plants in and out for like okay. two hours. But I mean, yeah. Uh, I never knew this. I never knew. I, and I, you know what? I guess this comes from living in Australia, also. Where, yeah, when you don't where, have to. You know, deal the weather's with that. just nice yeah, all year round. Yeah. yeah. And if to every person who is listening to this, who just goes, "We have bad weather too." Yeah, you do, but not like here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you think it's gonna be warm, and then it's like these and frosty it's, nights it's, can come at the beginning of June. It's, like, it's, it's, horrible. it's minus three degrees, and you're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's nothing. It's so <laughs> envious of like. <laughs> hey, so all right. So in, in in colder climates, you've got to get your plants used to being outdoors before you yeah, throw so them if you in have the ground. Like a balcony, you can like yeah. put them out like out over the day and then take them in for night. And you can yeah. also use like these little covers, mm-hmm. frost covers, mm-hmm. uh, which also keeps uh, keep some of the um animals way yep uh, there are a lot of yep wild things out there who want to eat your <laughs> crop <laughs> watch, you gotta watch out for those wild animals in sweden <laughs> they're vicious <laughs> uh, so, all the snakes yeah. and spiders and sharks oh, and God. things that'll uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're nothing compared to the murder slug <laughs> oh, that's right the murder slug oh my god <laughs> okay if you listen to this go google murder slug right <laughs> or, or maybe I should google that before we go any further just to see what comes up it before comes anybody up. does that hold on a second googling murder slug m-u-r-d-e-r-s-u like don't do this in front of children <laughs> <laughs> images murder slugs and piss ants oh <laughs> murder slugs and piss ants yeah you can google murder slugs that's right it's been okay slug. cool so that's um, like that's your um, yeah probably your worst enemy in <laughs> in gardening <laughs> they can uh they ruin so many crops what what is a mur- what is a murder slug and what does it do uh it's a slug that comes from i think it's from spain originally it's called okay. spansk skogsnigel so, Snigel. Yes. So Marulet. Yeah. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> so I'm going to translate it. Spanish forest. Snigel is snail, but you call slugs and snails snigel. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But anyway. All right. Um, so it's, it's been brought here through like a nursery. Yeah. And in Spain, the like populations are kept down by the extremely warm summers there. Okay. But we haven't really had that in Sweden until recently. Uh, so these uh, kind of wet and rainy summers that we've had, like oh, these um, these things go rampant. Just yeah, they yeah. they've been like a problem for like large scale agriculture businesses okay. as well. Yeah, um, uh, and they have like no natural enemies. They're so slimy that no one wants to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just horrible for a while. Like my mom was obsessed with killing these. Uh, she would go out nighttime with this like stick with a razor blade. <laughs> Oh my god, she just chopped them up. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, I heard this like with several moms. Uh, I was like, you can't have a conversation with my mom any longer because she only wants to go out and kill these slugs. <laughs> she's and she's gathering up a posse in the local <laughs> local town. <laughs> Murderous slug rage. <laughs> That's horrible. They're so disgusting. And it's like, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah it's like just feel, totally feel like your karma going down by killing these things because it's i mean usually like to do my gardening without killing 
yes well Great. yeah i and and you know, it's it got, it's so fascinating because you know i'm actually listening to you or having this conversation with you and we're having a good laugh about it but there is a part of the back of my head that just goes you shouldn't be killing things joe <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not karmically okay to kill things even murder slugs <laughs> <laughs> But on the other side of it is, you know, these these particular slugs are an introduced species, and yeah. you know, we are trying to, you know, if we if we are having a home garden, where it's it's not just about entertaining the kids on school holidays or in coronavirus shutdown, it is also learning some good life skills on how to grow your own food. Yeah, <laughs> which, definitely. Which, which yeah, is a good life yeah. school. And learning to be a bit more diverse in the community and learning to recycle food waste from restaurants to to have as compost and, you know, create a more sustainable society that we live in. So maybe a few slugs do need to sacrifice their lives. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe we do need to have that moment where we can just go, you know what, sorry, slug, either go back to Spain or I'm going to kill you. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a balance. There's this uh, documentary out on uh, called Biggest Little Farm. Oh. My friend uh, John, uh, who is also a landscape <coughs> designer, uh, tipped me off on it. It's really, it's out on, I mean, everyone is accessing SVCA Play, but for the Swedish listeners, yes. I think it's out uh, on, uh, it's, it's about a couple in, in California. Who buy a farm and uh, who want to uh, do an organic farming, uh, and it's super interesting all the struggles they have okay. with the, all the species that <laughs> want to eat, eat all each the animals other. that want to eat their food <laughs> and cool. each other. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, it's um, but gardening is such a great way of getting like respect for the food. Yes, you eat and realizing what a struggle it is to grow veggies, especially yeah. like without pesticides or I mean uh, organically grown fruit. It is, it is, uh, and you know I sort of I, <laughs> I sit here and like I say every year I try and germinate food like put tomatoes and zucchinis and that kind of stuff and and I fail dismally, but my hope is to get one salad for the entire uh, year right? To be able to sit down <laughs> and make a salad and go, I grew this. Yeah, but you have to go for the perennials too. I mean, that's another way of like having a more low maintenance garden. Okay. So there's Explain like, um, so the perennial is a plant that comes back year after year and yeah. there are some like veggie and herbs oh, ooh, that you can uh, do like uh, some uh, source of the wild uh, rocket salad or yeah rucula. see this this sounds more like me right so yeah yeah you know, me doing things like again finding my growing my gardening personality uh, yes because I kill things that need care yeah <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say <laughs> <laughs> I don't kill things that need care my whole business is based them. on caring for humans and that like you know I just I don't kill them. oh god <laughs> why would I say that I don't know it didn't sound as bad coming out. Of the <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so so the whole idea of having to put my my baby tomatoes out for like in in the sun for a couple of hours, uh, and in in a life where I'm actually not home for that many hours before I have to go to bed anyway. <laughs> so that's just you know, tomatoes. Sorry, dude, you're high maintenance. We need to break up. Let's yeah. Let's talk more about these per perennial things, right? So things that come back, right? So I just yeah, I get to put it in the ground once, and then yes. it comes back every yes. year. Yes, yes, this That's is a, uh, yeah. This so is you for can, me. Like find We're the balance between like these. Yeah. yeah, ones like more high maintenance stuff, like tomatoes, like yeah. just those, and that you can handle, and then just uh, go with the flow in your um. Yeah, in going your with the flow is my thing. Let's do yeah. that. All right. So you mentioned rocket there. Yeah. What else and, can I put uh, in my garden and no is you know what you know what does come back every year? And I just I look at it in spring and go, Oh, look at you. Uh is um chive onion chives, chives. Yes, yeah, like and all kinds of onions or stuff. Also, and like the garlic. Sage. I've got a yes, sage that's bush awesome. that just keeps coming back. Ah, you like uh, like stir fry or like in olive oil and some yeah. salt and with croutons. It's oh, it's amazing. Sage okay. is it's amazing. And uh, garlic. Thyme comes. Thyme? Back. Okay. 
uh, and, uh, and there are like these uh, uh, a little bit more like old-fashioned spices like vinte shindel i don't even know this what is uh, that the or oh, that's the oh. word for that and uh, is soap is another so like you can go to like uh, bergiansk and in stockholm and like yeah. look look at what they have there yeah. and see what's interesting and what you like in form and shape and having herb herb garden is great for like bees as well that yes. you want in your garden yes well and that's something that i was going to ask about uh so let's let's go there and now anyway yeah is how do i plant a garden to save the bees uh yeah you know because yeah, we all love you. bees what yes. kind of things should i they be planting need, for the bees they need all the help they can get uh oh, so we're talking about the yes yeah, so it's the wild wild bees um they need things to like uh, flower over the whole season yep so in the springtime it's great if you have like crocus yes yeah yeah crocus is the right word yes <laughs> yes and also uh, the like the willows um to for like the first pollen and then just could continue to have like a lot of herbs are good for yep for bees and um and different I mean, uh, butterflies and, and bugs too that we need. So just yeah, yeah. So and you know, like maybe a better term is just pollinators. Yeah, exactly. Um, rather than just bees, because you know, pollinators are everything that goes from flower to flower. Yes, uh, and uh, oh, I could. This is like a subject for a whole, for an entire pod. <laughs> so ah! just think like different different <laughs> shapes of flowers and like different colors, and like have something blooming all the time. And yeah, you can also and like. Perennials there and annuals. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, so this because this is something that that for me again moving here to Sweden, you know, I, I have this whole list in my head of things that I've noticed that are obviously, of course, different to where I grew up, um, and you know, and I find it, it's super fun for me uh, to be out in the countryside and you, you know you see the spring flowers that pop up now. Mm -hmm. And then in four weeks time, five weeks time, we get another lot of spring flowers. Like it's like a second phase of flowers come up. And then in the beginning of summer, like after midsummer and then the first sort of four weeks of summer, we get like the dandelions and those kind of like the, mm -hmm. the other ones die off and then the dandelions come out. And then you, you know, it's sort of as we're getting to late summer and into autumn, the flowers they they change you get these tiny flowers they're coming up on bushes that are sort of more woody bushes rather than these big colorful flowers that are on on really fleshy uh, soft plants you know all the all the woody bushy plants are starting to flower and all those flowers are just these tiny little but bright and they're really pretty but you've got to get in close and have a look at them anyway so <laughs> nerding out there um but so it's really really cool to watch watch the seasons you know yeah. and to, to watch the different you go okay so these these flowers are going to come up here and these flowers are going to come up here and these flowers are going to come up here and and you can almost set your clock by it well you can certainly set your calendar by it yeah you know it's like on, on this date these flowers start to bloom um no, anyway sorry. sorry that's yeah. just me having a little observation of life <laughs> um <laughs> And, but you know what? It is one of those things that actually really brings me joy because I yeah. I love to see the flowers bloom. So, but getting back to you, got to answer my question here because you've kind of been skirting around it. So I need some specific. <laughs> I want names. I want names. Um, what kind of flowers should I be planting in my garden when when I finally get time to build a flower garden? Yeah. What kind of plants should I be planting in my flower garden that are going to help feed the bees and me? as well you know like yeah. things things that i can consume or you know herbs and that kind of stuff that i can consume if you know those ones uh and mm -hmm. then also you know the flora and fauna in the area that's going to help the the entire ecosystem in the area flourish yeah and uh, so here some we just finished a project here at um uh, the office uh, with the um, municipality in Stockholm who planted all these uh, new beds for like flower yeah. beds for bees yeah. and uh, my colleagues uh, found that there were like a big uh, variety of bees like also outside these planted 
like in the okay. wild. Yep. So I think yep. one step to that is to like make your that it's okay that your garden is a little bit more chaotic. Like keep don't dig up the dandelions. Yeah. Uh, keep them. And there's this uh, weed that is really hated in Sweden called Kish Kishkoal. <laughs> It has a white flower, almost like Queen Anne's lace. Yeah. Uh, which are also like super great for bugs and yeah. some tiny butterflies probably yeah. <laughs> as well. Pollinators, just, you know, yeah. good for the pollinators. They love it. <laughs> uh, so uh, kind of let them take their place. And then yeah. there are all kinds of, I mean, also depends on what kind of soil you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, okay. Getting back to the soil yeah. conversation. Get to know your so, soil. Like, oh that is, I can't really. It's, like, it's, yeah, I'm skipping around this uh, question because it's, it's hard. It's a hard one to answer. I get, answer. You. I get it. I get it. That's all right. So, uh, but, but, you know, to, to help the listener out there, yes. um, you know, what, what can you say? So, if we created a to do list, right? Yes. We've got to so, get to know our soil. Yes, Classic. and and also like, uh, is there like parts of your lawn that you don't need to cut, uh, to let like uh, the. My my parents uh, tried this out at the farm, mm-hmm. last year. Not cutting. I mean, it was pretty warm summer too, and it was amazing how the whole uh, lawn just flowered up with mm-hmm. all these like mm-hmm. white uh, yarrows, is that? Yeah, and uh, just all these wild flowers that yeah, are yeah. like in a seed bank in the lawns yeah but but they have like a sandy soil where they are so then wildflowers have an easier way of it's okay. easier for them to yeah if you have more of a clay soil the grasses might take over so you don't get to like that many flowers so then you, you can um, help uh, the bees out with like you can buy little uh, seed yep. bags with like annuals yep uh, and also with the, like um, the cover crops. Yep. Uh, and you can just like yeah. Just throw that out yeah, in your lawn. Yeah. So that helps. Oh, helps that's cool. I'm so gonna do that this year. Yeah. Where can I get one of those from. Uh, <laughs> and I, I want to do that this year. <laughs> Stay tuned, yeah. people. You'll see my my flowers. Uh, where do I get one of those from? And when when should I? If I if I do go when not if when yeah when I get yeah. one of these you, that, you flower in bags May. in May in May I yeah get that out. okay yeah or even beginning of June. I mean yeah. you have so that's that's late spring. Yes, because yeah. it's uh, you like yeah because we're just getting like frosty nice even in the beginning of june so yeah. i think yeah um so that's that's great for cool for, uh, pollinators uh and, and then you can if you're lucky you can get this like seed bank going also in your soil so some of those flowers might come back okay next year yep um so that's, and that's, that's a, yeah because that's a question that i have is is if i if i do this seed bag thing and just throw them out there yeah. Do those seeds then germinate and drop their own seeds to be able to come up next year? Some or of them do, might. Is it something? So, okay. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And some, I have this uh, <laughs> ongoing system with, uh, or we do at uh, allotment with the uh, flower, I think it's called star flower in English. It's uh, a Burago, Burago uh, it's called in Latin. It's a yes. blue flower. Give us the Latin name. Come on, we yes. love it. <laughs> Come on, nerding out <laughs> here. Give me a letter. I love a good Latin name. It's called Gurk, uh, Gurk Art in Swedish. It's really a cute, like a bluish flower. And yep. that has like come into a south uh, germinating phase. So it's like, didn't do anything with the gardens. <laughs> they would just be covered in this, which is a um, pretty good thing because then you can, uh, like, if I want to plant something here, I can just pull them out and if you have an area that I'm not going to do anything with this this year you just let it be there just let it go cool um, yeah so um, that's also like you never really know what your soul is going to yes kind of flowers will grow there so it's uh, you have to be like uh, like not afraid to experiment and fail when it comes mm-hmm. to to gardening and uh, hey, can we just sit Small life lesson there, kids. Don't be afraid <laughs> to experiment and fail. And pretty much everything, not just yeah. gardening. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Uh, 
So, yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I distracted you there. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's been so Sorry. interesting with this, this journey that I've been, uh, been through. And yeah, you really get to know yourself yeah. by gardening and like, I love it. Is seriously, you've just you've. It's like that that whole statement at the beginning. It's just given me permission to be okay with the fact that I suck at gardening, because because <laughs> now I can just go. Oh, right, I just haven't found my groove. I haven't found my flat my plants. Yeah, I haven't found my way of doing things, uh, which gives me permission to go and experiment. To be yes, able to definitely find my and way of doing like things. Take- and be more more low key and not like you can like pretty much do this on a zero budget too. Yeah, yeah. Like I spent so many so much money on like seeds and special things, and but now it's like, yeah, I buy very few. Yeah. Speaking seeds. of which, you owe me some seeds. You promised. Yes. Me the other day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I still like loads from the time where I still bought a lot of seeds. Uh, I hope they still like. Because they, it's also so super stressful. Because like every year you like save seeds, they like their germination yeah, okay. rate goes down too. So you can't oh. save seeds forever. Yep. Either so. So you've got to keep planting. But that's and you know you, it is, and I guess coming back to building community and that kind of stuff, it is you trade seeds with friends. Yes, and also yeah. plants because you might like yeah, but you don't think that everything is gonna like survive or come up when you yeah. do put your little seeds down and they're like so tiny it's like every year if we get they're gonna be like a big yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and all of a sudden <laughs> your like two bedroom apartment is just crammed it turns into a freaking jungle <laughs> and like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and because you didn't give them time out on the balcony they die when you take them outside but you know you spent six months freaking giving them out <laughs> anyway mm. in that slow to work and it's like hard when your whole kitchen is already full with like compost buckets that everyone is tripping over <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, you know, it's 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 what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have to do, say one thing about like mm. that. One thing like I've been said earlier on that I can be a little bit skeptical of this like permaculture thing and like all these trends that come through. But I was also very skeptical against this uh, Japanese. Yeah, okay. yeah. The thing. yep. And I have to just mention that that is actually a great thing. Aha! The yeah, if you have, what was its name? What was it? Uh, Bokashi, Bokashi? Bokashi. Yes, the Bokashi thing. Yes. You can yes. go Google that. So that's great because you sort of uh, ferment your compost. Yep. Uh, so it's not as smelly. Yep. Uh, if you keep it like, like if you don't, yeah, you can't get too wet because then it's like extremely <laughs> smelly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but that uh, keeps it binds the coal in okay. keeps, like the organic organics because yeah. um, the normal compost you know, like uh, lets out methane gas. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's I think that has helped us a lot. Okay. Finally, at the our allotment, and yeah. I'm also like digging digging it down because I have like a tiny garden space that I can uh, where I plant my delicates outside. In uh, in Orsta. In Orsta. So, <laughs> it's so like, you plant your delicates. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go like potatoes and garlic uh, out at the uh, Pungatin on. Uh, it's much warmer because we have this like uh, brick uh, wall and it's close to Orsta again. So it's, yep. uh, um, it's, I think it's like a whole climate zone warmer. Oh, really? Warmer wow. than it is at, because uh, that's another thing with the climate zones that you like, you can't grow. Uh, everything mm, anywhere okay so the soil and climate zones are are good to keep track of okay um, so many things i need to know yeah but <laughs> but here like in stockholm area is pretty good i grew up in small land where it's like <laughs> winters are really cold <laughs> <laughs> nothing grows uh, nothing grows <laughs> so no plants for you this year just potatoes yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah in Stock- I mean, Stockholm is great, like, especially if you're close to, to Mala, and it's awesome too. It's a super good growing nice. conditions. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Uh, <sighs> I don't know if you got like the answers you thought you were going to get. <laughs> but... Honestly, I can't even remember the conversation. <laughs> I'm staying yeah, in the moment. That's what happens nowadays. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> 
but I will go back and listen to it and we'll see if we got, if, if we didn't get the answers, you'll be getting emails. <laughs> but you know, really know your soil, get to know your plants and get to get to allow yourself a space to find plants that work with you. Yeah. Rather than, you know, plants can be like people, right? You know, some of them require more energy than you've got, and some of them are really low maintenance. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, <laughs> good way of putting it. Cool. <laughs> so, because this is the question I ask everybody, and uh -huh. we're running really short. We've yes. got like three minutes to answer yes. this question. How do you maintain your balancing act with two kids and a husband? Is he a husband or a man? Is he, are you married? Yes, not, not that that's important. Sorry, but you know. <laughs> so here's your husband. I just want to make sure I get the right the right <laughs> word there. So you've got two kids and a husband, and you have this amazing job that you do, uh, landscape architecting, and you have your gardens and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you manage the balancing act of life? <laughs> question. Three minutes is that? Uh, well, that's uh, actually an interesting question because i think yeah because a garden requires a lot of work so sometimes mm -hmm. i've been struggling with like is this like give, taking more energy than it's giving Interesting. back mm -hmm. uh, and i also feel i have like a very i mean eric relaxes by like playing fifa or just hanging out he's mm -hmm. good at he's good at relaxing i'm terrible at relaxing uh -huh. my way of relaxing is like going and digging in this like clay soil and struggling and like <laughs> that's not really i mean it's, it's no, but it is come on <laughs> it is it's good yeah it, it is good i love it but sometimes it stresses me out mm. as well to like no yeah. i didn't weed that um, part of the allotment but that's where you really had have to like uh, tune in with nature and say it's okay that like my garden is a little bit wild it might even be like better for mm. biological diversity that these dandelions are flowering i don't need to take them out so we have mm. this uh, like picture of like the english perfect garden like victorian uh, yes. <laughs> cut, cut grass and like everything tidy in order and uh, yeah look, yeah you know look where that gets us yeah yes <laughs> yes <laughs> So that's uh, that's in the past. <laughs> yep. Moving so forward, to, uh, <laughs> let your dandelions more, grow. <laughs> yes, more chaos in our lives in a good way. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I think that's what I've uh, sort of accepted a level of chaos in my life, and yes. just realizing that that is also a little bit of who I am. <laughs> you get a high five on that one. Yay! Five. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, my friend John sent me a title of a book called Cultivating Chaos. And it was about uh, just this morning. And it's a book about how like to get your garden going with just like these self-germinating mm -hmm. seeds and just mm -hmm. going. So I'm totally going to try to get my hands on this cool book now because I was like, oh my God, it's like chaos. Yeah, it's not a good title. Yeah. I love it. Have to, so, we'll have to put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Oh, awesome awesome yeah. awesome uh anna maria thank you so much for coming in and chatting with me today you know it was fun isolation together <laughs> yes um if people want to get in contact with you because this isn't what you do i will say they can get in contact with me and i'll pass that on uh you know because yes that's where yeah. that's the way we're going to do that one yeah um if you want to get in contact with Anna Maria, get in contact with me and I'll pass that on. Uh, we, I will go and make a little to-do list because we came up with one in there. When I go back and listen through this, we had a little to-do list to get in contact with your garden and yourself at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's all I have to do. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Yeah. All right. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Hey, da. Hadara. <laughs>